Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy Allison. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons online. In this video, I'm just gonna go over the names and functions of the different views in Ableton Live. To start off, just take a look at the interface of Ableton Live. You'll notice that it has a darker gray background, really thin, if you follow my mouse. And then each section has a, even a darker gray line surrounding it. And then you'll also notice some of them have these little triangle tabs that we can open and close on the corners specifically. And of course, up here on the top right, we have these two little buttons that will switch between arrangement view and session view. So the first two views I wanna talk about are really important for new users. If you go down to the bottom left, you'll find this little triangle and you'll pop it open. And this is called info view. Info view will give you information about anything that you put your mouse over. So if I put it over this little knob that says C on it, if you look down in info view, it says send, and then it tells you about it. So it's a great way to learn the interface. It'll, it'll scroll over everything in live and it'll tell you information about it. Another great view can be found under help, help view. And if you're a new user, I highly recommend popping open help view. In fact, it should already be open the first time you load live and you'll find all these different awesome little built-in tutorials that you can use. If you're absolutely new to Ableton Live, a tour of live is a great place to start. It tells you all about live and you learn a lot about it. And then of course, run these top level ones, recording, audio, creating beats, all of that stuff. If you're new to live, even if you're not new to production, it really helps to kind of quickly run through these and get to know the interface. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close live lessons and I'm gonna close info view for now. The next area I wanna talk about is session view. Session view is like the meat and potatoes of Ableton Live. You have your tracks that run up and down. And on these tracks, there's what's called clip slots that you can put little bits of audio or MIDI. This one has a little drum clip. I can click the triangle to start it. I can click a square to stop it. If I were to create a MIDI track and load an instrument, Let's just go to instruments and grab an operator and pull my MIDI from all ends and arm the track and also enable the computer MIDI keyboard. This will allow me to use A through L key plus the keys above it are my white keys and my black keys of a piano. Z and X will change the octave. So I can play a little bass line to this beat. If I want to record that, I just hit the little circle button. So that's pretty much what session views for. The other cool thing about it is, let's just go ahead and delete that. I have these other clips I want to play with. I can use it to launch scenes. So if you come over here on the master bus, you'll see I have one through 19. I can of course create more scenes under the create tab. I can create scenes, insert tracks, insert MIDI tracks, all that fun stuff. But the other cool thing about this area is I can launch the entire scene. And you'll notice what happened was it stopped the clip that was playing and played the clip that was stopped. That's based on uh, some of my settings in live. So if I want them all to play, make sure they're all the same state. And if I trigger the scene below it, it clear, triggers all the stop buttons to stop the clips. So this is a really cool way if I wanna get a quick song structure, I can actually just select these clips, duplicate the clips a few times, and then just start taking stuff out. Let's start out by taking out the drums, and let's just do a quick standard, something like that. I deleted the drums and the bass from the first scene. Um, in the second scene, the bass comes in. In the third scene, the drum comes in, and then we pull the bass out. And then let's go ahead and copy these clips, paste them down there. And now we can trigger the scenes. It kind of gives it like a quick little build up. And then. Pull the bass out for a second. And 
And that's just a quick way to do a song structure. And that's kind of what session view is all about. I can experiment with different things. Like, hmm, I wonder what it'd sound like with just the bass. I deactivate that clip, hit space bar, or push play up top. And if I like that, I'll just go ahead and duplicate that down. And that way I can launch this scene. Try that again. You know, it's just a lot of fun. You can just sit there and kind of play around and get some ideas. I can, of course, record in parts in the MIDI track. And if you come down from that, you'll notice you have your IO. This is where you can route audio in, like if you're recording live audio, and also MIDI in if you have multiple MIDI controllers that you want to dedicate to the bus. You can, of course, route your audio too. If you have multiple outs on your audio interface, for some reason you need to go out, like in a live performance, you wanna set out track separations to the front of the house, this is where you would do it. And like say you're sending MIDI to a hardware device or a MIDI keyboard that has its own brain, I can just have an empty MIDI track and then send the MIDI to whatever bus I want to get to that brain. And then if you come down, you got your send knobs and of course your track controls, your faders, your pans and all that. So not only is this like your clips and song kind of idea scratch pad, compositional scratch pad kind of thing, um, it's also really good for live performance, live looping. Um, you can record straight in and it'll start looping. But it's also a really good spot for mixing. You can see all of your faders. You can actually even change the, the length of the fader by clicking this little gray line. So if you want more resolution on the faders to make more precise fader movements, you can just stretch that up. And now you can get a little more precise than you could if it's like way down here. And then over on the master bus, you have of course your master fader. And then the most important thing right here, this little headphone thing that says solo on it, that actually is your cue out volume and also your click track volume. The click track is routed to the queue out bus. Right now I'm just running computer audio so I don't have separate buses. But if I had an interface with multiple channels, I could put the click track in its own bus so it only goes to my headphones, which is really handy of course for playing live. And another area I'd like to point out in a session view is over here you can change the interface. So I can hide the input output options, I can hide the sends, and I can shrink down my faders now, I have a lot of space for clips. So if I'm doing a lot of clip editing and stuff like that, I can minimize everything down. I can even hide the mixer section, but it doesn't really help right now. But if I had more scenes, let's just uh, create more scenes. And you can go to create insert scene, or of course you'll notice that the hotkeys listed right next to it, command I. So what I like to do, and this is how I learn my hotkeys. I'll just go ahead and use the hotkey to do it. So if I'm just working on clips, I'm not worried about mixing right now, and I'm doing like a big live set or doing a lot of composition here, I can have a lot more real estate for clips. I can even hide this section down here, which even gives you more room for clips. So let's just go ahead and add some more. So you can see now I have a lot of clips and I can even hide this view and then I can have a lot of tracks. So it's a lot of ways that you can modify. So now we're basically only looking at session view. And now let's go talk about arrangement view. So up here on the top, you'll see the linear lines and the vertical lines. The vertical lines are represented of the up down kind of flow of session view. And the linear lines are more representative of the linear timeline of a regular DAW. Now over in arrangement view, you'll notice that I have some of the clips, I have the same clips, but they're not, they're not the same clips. They're actually different instances of the clip. I can drag this clip over, plop it in. It is now a new instance. So whatever I do to this clip in a range view, it doesn't affect the clip in session view, but it is sharing a bus. So if you'll notice it's on the same track and I can highlight this track 1BHGD, switch back over, you'll notice that it's highlighted in session view. So all the effects and mixer controls and anything that's on that track will affect the audio. Other thing you'll notice that is all these clips are kind of faded out. And what you need to do is push this orange button. This is the back to arrangement view button. Whenever you do something in session view, it overrides arrangement view. So 
Now I'm back in the range view. I'm going to go back to the range view arrangement, click that button, and anything that was queued up to play in session view will have been turned off. And now I can play arrangement view. So if you're working on an arrangement, you can do that. And the neat thing is, you're like, who? Oh, I wonder what it would sound like if I started with the baseline from the beginning. So let me go ahead and trigger a baseline in session view. And you notice how it fades out the baseline, but not the rest. It only overrides what you play. And now I can uh, either click back to arrangement view, or if I just want to disable this section. I could click that little triangle there, which happened to be the only thing that was overridden. So the back to arrangement left. And you also notice if I come over here, down on the bottom, and let's show the, the mix it. And the, let's make it look more normal again. Right here on the bottom of the clips on the scenes, you'll see a back to arrangement button there. I can click there. So session view is more about performing live and creating your basic framework or your idea of your composition and kind of like coming up with ideas. And then a range of views more for like finishing tracks. So you get your idea. You can actually literally like watch this. I'm just going to delete everything here, arm record and start triggering scenes. And you'll notice that it recorded what I was doing. Any fader movement, any effect movement, it'll all record into a range of view. So now we can go click the back to arrangement button and start working on the track. So you can come up with your entire frame of your idea in session view, hit record and play it in and have a lot of fun and make it really feel good and live. And then you can come over and arrange with you after you've recorded it and edit it. And that's what it's all about. And in, the, in arrange with you, you also notice that you have different sections. You can access your track delays. You can close and show and hide the uh, mixer section. You can even adjust the volumes. There's the volume, the mute, the solo, the arm record. It's all here. So you can completely work in a range of view. You don't need to switch back and forth. It even has your VU meters on the edge. This is more conducive to mixing and you can focus more on mixing, in my opinion, visually over here and quicker than you can over here. But that's also a preference. Now, while we're talking about arrangement view and session view, another really handy feature is this view up here. It's called overview. And you can access that under view, overview. I can hide it and I can show it. And now what that does is it gives me the general idea of the composition. So let me undo a few times. So I can zoom in and zoom out and move around my composition. So if I have a really large composition, I can zoom out and say, I wanna zoom in way down here. I can just click where I want to be and it'll just snap the grid or at the end of the tune and it'll just snap it right there. Another trick is if you're in session view and you're say you're mixing or something like that, you can show overview and now I can play it. I can skip around. So it kind of gives me a scrub. So if I'm working on this section here and I just want to hear it again real quick, I just click right before it. Really handy, really, really handy when you're mixing and you're working over here and it saves you from having to switch back and forth. Where am I at? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But you can just be moving up here and clipping things around. Even when you're like, say you're working in, like say you have some like really long clips and you're trying to mix and work on it. It'll skip the timeline from the clips playing in session view, which is really handy because there's really no way to keep everything in time. I can start playing. We'll talk about this in a second, but I can start the clip from down here, but it won't be lined up with the rest of the clips. So overview is really helpful for, for keeping all the clips in line. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide overview because I kind of like the real estate in session view. And you'll notice too is I can hide overview and session view, but it stays there in arrangement view. I like it in arrangement view. I don't always need it in session view. Now let's look down to the bottom of the screen. This is where you'll find clip view and device view. And let's pull up operator where I have my device on there. And let's add a clip. There's clip view. 
I double click to add a clip in the track, automatically switches to clip view. I can edit it. And you can see the notes being populated down here in this little icon. These are like two little tabs. That's how you switch between them. So device view is where all your audio effects, MIDI effects, um, VSTs, plugins, everything like that goes into device view. And clip view is where you can edit your MIDI and audio clips. And you get different options based on what type of clip is selected. And two really good hotkeys. One is tab. We'll switch between a range of view and session view. Shift tab will actually switch between device view and clip view. One little trick I like to do is I like to have MIDI clip view up. Because when I'm in clip view, I'm usually editing a MIDI clip. And then device view does not expand. So when I'm editing a clip, I can go to clip view and then I shift tab back to device view when I'm not editing and I have the real estate of my mixer out and my session view back. Also in a range of view, same thing. I can edit my clip, switch back, and I can see my clips right here. So I don't really need to see the clips down there. And I can also even, if I really need to get a good idea what's going on, I can just look right here and get an idea on this little bottom part. Let's show one more view, and that is the browser. This is where you find all your sounds, your instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, all your stuff, your third-party plugins, your packs, everything. Um, places you can add your own files, so you can have your own navigation. You don't actually ever have to leave live when you're doing anything. I can go into my music library of iTunes, grab some tunes, sample it, do whatever I want. Basically, click Add Folder, select the folder you want, and then hit open. And there's another video I go more into detail about the browser. So you can check that out if you want more information. But that pretty much covers all the basic views I wanted to talk about. One last thing to take note, up on the top is kind of a global area where you have it in both session and arrangement view. You have your global transport, your tempo, your metronome, all of that fun stuff up here. If you don't know all what everything does up here, just pop open info view, scroll over each one of these, and it'll tell you all about it. Anyway, thanks for watching. My name is Jimmy Allison. I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons online. Check out austinabletontutor.com for more information.